Hey. Give him the eyes, all eyes. <laughs> it's all in the eyes. Ooh. Ooh. Can't even get a little shoulder from Jay. Yeah, you know I mean, he can't even get a little. <laughs> I can't get that dance right. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's that, love? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Lizzie Cash from Boston mm. Airbnb. But right now, you're now tuned into me, 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 Damn, your game like you and JT, your game is like is like similar when they see me. So it's like it's just an honor to have him here today. You know what I mean? What? I don't know if I model my game after him or he modeled his game after me. What? You know? What I mean? No, I'm just saying. You know? What Who I mean? the fuck ever told you that? And I'm gonna tell you some. And I'm gonna tell you some of his special salt. So, you know, doing. You know what I mean? Doing the quarantine. Uh, you know, shout out to Pooh. I mean, Coach Pooh. Y'all know who PA is, uh -huh. Pooh Island. Mm -hmm. MP, that's some other stuff. I used to cook Pooh back in the day. I'm Poo, just saying. Pooh passed him my book. McGonagall, Poo Pearson pa Hall, cooked him. Yeah, y'all. Throw him on the grill. Yeah, yeah. I called him out. He didn't want to step in. Throw some old nigga burgers on the grill. Call it, call cooked it, him right? <laughs> cooked him my, game. It's my people's, though, but I cooked him. During a quarantine, Pooh gave me my book, The Mind of Wild 0267. Mm. You remember the book? Ever since then, his game his game been out of this world. Oh, get this <laughs> game been out of this world. So if you play sports out there and you want, you know, it, it's about taking things to the next level. Pussy, I don't know what happened to him. He read the book. He came out. He was somebody different. Yeah, nigga had sixty. But then he already, you know, they already talking about our game on different on, on a, 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 a what is it? DSPN. Is DSPN. It, yeah, that's like some internet joints. It's sort of like them, but they oh. talk about sports <laughs> on an underground level. But we not, you know what, man, like. In this journey through life, Jay, right? In this journey through life, Lil Jay, Lil Jay, yeah. where you, you know, at? Where you at right you now? You can only call him that if you know yeah. him. Know him. You know him. Yeah, but man. where you at right now, Lil Jay? When you was uh, your mom had you at nineteen, man. It was times when you know. Shout out to Brandy Cole, man, sister. You was amazing, amazing. I'm Beautiful talking about woman. Amazing, amazing woman. You made things happen when a lot of people would have gave up. Uh, it was times that the utilities wasn't paid. Mm -hmm. It was times when, you know, no furniture. It was times when it just was like, it was nothing. I'm talking about, I'm talking about you slept in the bed with your mom. She just was strong, 19 years old, had you still going to college, never gave up. Um, how do you feel now after all that? How do I feel now? Uh, I'm, I'm living on my dream. And... Like you said, honestly, I I know where I come from. I know everything that I've been through. Uh, and I went through that way longer than I've been successful. So I'm not too far removed from that. And I think the best part is remembering all of that and then sharing everything that I've accomplished, everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm living with my mom. Uh, just because we know what it was like to go without and to to be an opportunity, be in a situation where, you know, we don't have to worry or struggle. 
um, and, and just have, have her live a stress-free life, that's, that's better than anything I could ask for. And, and what's so strong about that, like, you know, we always talk about the journey and, you know, coming up and it just being hard. Uh, and I got to give a shout out to your mom again. She's, she's, she's unbreakable. But how did you feel? You're 11 years old. Your mom picked you up from school. And you come home, you see that foreclosure sign on the door. And y'all had to get up out of there. That was, that was one of the most memorable days of my life. Um, like you said, I was 11. I remember she picked me up. We went to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I'm here helping her carry the bags. She walked up the steps first. And I remember she just dropped the bags and started crying. I'm 11. I'm like, why are you crying? And I see the pink eviction notice on the door. And at the time, I just felt helpless because I couldn't go get no job. I, ain't, I just knew that she was so overwhelmed with everything going on and trying to make ends meet and doing everything she could. I remember that day I was like, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a take care of us one day. And that was a pivotal, pivotal day in my life. You said not a lot of people have been through that or, or seen that only in movies. Like I actually remember that day like it was yesterday, and that's what make times like now so you know I value them so much because right. I know what it's like to almost have to go live with your grandma or, or be kicked out your house. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to St. Louis growing up. A couple niggas baked you. <laughs> Scott Suggs who cooked hey, yo, your <laughs> ass one day. I'm talking about Scott Suggs <laughs> barbecue. Cooked, you. I'm talking about you was you was the whole menu at a barbecue. Who did he, talk to? he cooked you no, so people. bad. Our research. You know that look. I knew I knew I bring, I bring up Scotty boy. Uh, he Scotty said was he's no shaking joke. now. And Scott cooked his ass so bad. Yeah. He they said. He came back to the gym. He didn't even know Scott was in there. <laughs> he come in. He got flip flops on. They say he seen Scott. He hauled ass back to the car to get his gear. He had to get some get back. Scott. Scott put some smut on your name. Yeah. Scott. Scott so, wasn't playing. So was that always how you was designed? Like if somebody got out on you, you would you just had to get some get back. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, I was Shout out to Scott Suggs too. <laughs> SS, you know, SS and Paolo, man, did him dirty. Gave him forty five. <laughs> Shout out to Scott. I was a. Uh, um, we worked out with the same trainer, Drew, and uh, I. Now that I know this, I was a freshman. This was like my first week working out with Drew, and I thought I was nice. I thought I was the best freshman in St. Louis, the best eighth grader, and Drew had me work out with Scott. We played one on one for like an hour. Because he, he basically wanted to show me I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Longest hour of your life, huh? He kicked my ass. I heard him. We, we played six, seven games of one-on-one. -on -one. I couldn't beat him. I, I really couldn't score. Mm. And I felt like, and Drew, and that's when Drew finally got my attention. He was like, all right, now we got a lot to work on. Fast forward, Scott, Scott was in college. Oh, he was an overseas player. He was working out pre-draft. Two years later, I was a junior. So now I'm like the number one player in the country. So I'm with my uh, I'm with my older cousin, and we going uh, we going to the gym. They playing pickup, like you said. I got flip flops. I got my khakis on from from school. I got a polo on. So I'm just going in to chill. I seen Scott. Mm. I ain't seen Scott in two years. I said, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> so so in them two years, Scott Scott, you just had to carry Scott's name around. Like Scott, you <laughs> Scott Scott was a part of. Scott was a part. You was one of Scott's victims at the time. So you was like, I got to come up off this victim list. I was, I'm, I'm real, Scott is a real good dude. Like he ain't, he's a real, you know, first class guy. So he ain't walk around telling me he kicked my ass. And okay, so he was cool. Then. He just knew it. When y'all seen each other, it was a mutual grin. Yeah, he, he, he Cooked he you, nigga. He, he knew. <laughs> he ain't tell a lot of people though. But when I was 17, two years later, and I seen him in the gym, I ran in my trunk, grabbed some sneaks. <laughs> I used to wear shorts under my khakis at school just in case. And I went in there and they know what happened. You got some get back. Damn, Scotty. Damn, okay. So so Scotty had a funeral. No, 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 no. Hold on. Scotty ain't take so wait, wait, wait. Scotty won and won. Like, let's not put too much yeah, smut yeah, on Scotty. Right, and if right. Scotty got out on him, yeah, he, he got out on Scotty. Now, they got to see somewhere along the line, and they got to, yeah, they you know, uneven this yeah. shit. You feel what I'm saying? Scotty put that word Like, on. we ain't going to act like Scotty is down. Well, no, see, you, you know what's so good about him? We glad he ran to his trunk in a different way. 
Yeah. He said, I ran to the trunk. Right, right. Hit the trunk, pop the trunk. Oh, shit. I'm like, oh, ever since, it's so great that he ran to his trunk and got some, he got the sneaks and not something else. You know, in, in the hood, when somebody uh, run into the trunk, the whole gym cloud, he going to the trunk. Everybody like this. He got a gun. You know, you know how to show it was like, luckily he went and got uh, some Nikes. Nigga screaming, watch out for Lil J. Watch out Lil J. <laughs> Lil J. Lil J come back. Lil J. <laughs> Lil J going to the trunk. So it was good that he went in a different way. But uh, you know what's crazy though? Even, even, even with the Scotty thing, when you was in the fifth grade, man, they say you was uh playing with grown men dropping quarters. You was dropping 25 and all that, barbecuing them. That, that's why I keep saying our games are similar. It's the same thing. They, but they was. Street, he know. was, except for when he came up against Brad. Bradley Bill. Oh, yeah, that's another story. And that's another story. Hey, yo. <laughs> yeah, Bradley. They said Brad was a little older. Brad used to say, uh, uh They say Bradley was throwing bullets. Uh, they say, yeah, you young and all that, and you play with the older people, but uh take this 35. <sighs> it's crazy, man. But Brad, that's a whole different story. That's like <laughs> <laughs> that's like my big brother. Yeah, that's right. right. So he he literally lived around the corner. His mom was my mom, volleyball coach in high school. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Brad used to kick my ass too. Brad, so so now, like when y'all come up against each other in the league, is it like, you know, I'm gonna cook the shit out you tonight, Brad? Oh yeah, I mean you can, you can ask Pooh. When we play when we play the Wizards, the first quarter almost be like we playing one on one. Right. <laughs> I'm guarding him, he guarding me, and I try to score every time. But was Brad? Did Brad like uh, give you some added motivation? Being that y'all went to the same school, huh? Mm-hmm. And he was before you, right? And he kind of set the tone for what you could be, what you could do out here. You know what I'm saying? So was he like some motivation, like, damn, Brad in the league, like, I'm the top junior, I'm the top player in the country, I'm the I'm the top senior now. You know, you looking on the grand Brad Price, standing on Bentleys and shit, you like, I'm on my way, it's just a matter of time. Was like Brad that motivation for you? I, I went to my high school because because of him. Uh, I never forget. I was in seventh grade, middle school, and high school was connected. So he was a senior, uh, and he used to take me home every day from school. And he won Gatorade National Player of the Year uh, his senior year, and I was there when they gave him the trophy. And after he did the the media, he came and told me he was like, "Yo, just lock in. You're gonna be here in, in five, four years, six years." So just. Someone I looked up to, I wanted to be like. And at the time, I felt like he was the best player to come out of St. Louis. And I always wanted that tag. So I thought that I had to do everything he did and more to be the best player out of St. Louis. Absolutely. And, you know, he was all the motivation. And I still look up to him to this day. Man, let me get into the sponsor, right? This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is presented by New Amsterdam Vodka. New Amsterdam Vodka was born from uncompromising passion for great vodka. This commitment to excellence enable New Amsterdam to produce a vodka of superb taste and unparalleled smoothness. Now, the thing about New Amsterdam vodka is uh, it's distilled five times, it's filtered three times for that clean, crisp finish, so you could drink it with anything. You know, you could drink it straight up, you could drink it on the rocks, you could drink it with soda, juice, you can make the classic New Amsterdam mule. So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you pick up some New Amsterdam vodka. It's also great for pre-gaming. Like the playoffs when you know Lil J is going up against Big Motherfucker, mm-hmm. you know, you know. It, what else you want to be sipping on? You want to be <laughs> nice and good when you watching Big Motherfucker in the post. You know what I'm saying? With with the fadeaways and the fifteen footers, and you know, what I mean, Jay, you know, Lil J gonna do his thing too. Ain't no, ain't no doubt about that. But uh. It's great for pre-gaming, so when you're out and about, make sure you pick you up some new Amsterdam vodka. It's the official vodka for Barstool Sports and the presenting sponsor for Million Dollars Worth of Game. And shout out to the new Amsterdam queen, my wife. You know, she be having her girlfriends over at the crib, and they do their cocktails, and they, they do all their little drinks with the new Amsterdam vodka. So shout out to the new Amsterdam queen, too. b Hobbs, <laughs> your cousin. I heard he used to cook you, too. I heard he I'm used to this, take though. you out back. They say you was the main course at every barbecue <laughs> back in the day. All the barbecues, they, you was the main they course. They said that's what got you to where you're at that's right why now. He's an animal now. <laughs> they said that's what got you because they said Scott got out on you, Brad got out on you, and your big cousin, B Hobbs, got out on you. Is that what toughens you up like this? <laughs> 
was was B Hobbs dropping them numbers on you? Like he, he don't like B Hobbs. He, the <laughs> fact that B Hobbs <laughs> told him, he like. Who these yeah. niggas to talk to? Man. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Who y'all getting all this info from? We know people. We know people, man. But was those the driving forces? Because it seemed like you always played against older people, though. Yeah. Um. And so Hobbs, that's my older cousin. He got to be six or seven years older than me. And I've known him since I was, like, I was in diapers. Um, and like you said, I always played against people that was older than me. I played in the men's league on the weekends. I used to go to the gym and hoop with people that was in high school and I was in middle school. And I played it. I probably played against Hobbs more than anybody in my life. Yeah, that's what we heard. And any like if somebody really used to kick my ass, it was him. Oh, okay, that's what's up. So I, you, I can't even front. He he did. But they t- they told me right. They said you the like the one of the biggest Nelly fans. They said all they got to do is put on. We are going oh, Nelly, down, you dro- down, baby. You Yo, street in the Range Rover, street sweeper, baby. Car, ready to let it go. He's shimmy, playing. shimmy, Coco Puff. They said you going for sixty. Bringing the band aids out. They said, <laughs> He's slamming on people in Air Force One. I need to pair. Bear. He comes through slamming. Oh, on. Ah, he snapped. As soon as he hear that, he snapped. I'm putting, putting he in some my forces. Air Force One. They go crazy. I remember you was on the Slam Mag. Or something you had the band aid on, huh? He was going it, yep. He wasn't playing. You, why, why is it to you? It's like St. Louis versus the world. Yes, it is. You love St. Louis. It, it's not. It's nothing. Nothing more important than St. Louis. I mean, he just like it's just all out there. But I want to. I want to get into something right that affect a lot of kids, right? I want to say something to you, teachers out there. A lot of you teachers, y'all got to be mindful what y'all say to uh, children as they're growing up because your teacher told you. You told her, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. Told you to change your dreams. And shout out, once again, shout out to mom. Brandy Cole went up there and told her, pulled her to the side. And uh, if you know how black women is, <laughs> she told her some things that I can't say. <laughs> she straightened out and accordingly. <laughs> but I'm just saying, teacher told you, no, you tripping. Uh, why would you do that? You need to get something more realistic. How did you feel that day as a kid? Like, cause you 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 had to share that with your mom. How did you feel like? Yeah, uh, and I was in I was in fourth grade, and honestly, my whole life, I didn't go to school where I lived at. I always went. My mom always found a way to put me in private schools, from mm-hmm. elementary, middle school, and high school, which I'm 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 thankful for. Yeah, but I was often the times it was when fourth grade it was two black kids in that class, and I was one of them. So I'm going to school with kids. Moms don't work, so they volunteer at the school, or their parents dropping them off in Benzes and Range Rovers. So we just we live two totally different lives. So I'm already borderline intimidated when I go to school, right? Because you know they looking at me like I really don't belong here. Mm-hmm. So in fourth grade, and then you didn't have the financials that they yeah. had. Mm-hmm. So you know you just really making it through, and and you know you you in a you in a situation where you making it through and they. The people that you're around, they all blessed. For sure. And I just remember fourth grade, the teacher talking about, you know, I want everybody to write a paragraph on what they what they want to be when they get older, what they want to do when they get older. So, you know, all the kids, they want to do what their parents do. They want to be doctors and dentists and lawyers. You know, they want to be what they see every day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, she came around me. I was like, you know, I want to be an NBA. I want to be an NBA one day. And I want y'all to see me on TV. And she was like, she looked at me and she was like, you got to pick something more realistic. And I remember everybody in the class kind of laughed at me. And I like, I felt so, I felt this big. I was embarrassed. And I remember I was crying. I told my mom and like, I'll never forget. She told me that as long as she believed in me, as long as, you know, she is going to support me, it don't matter what nobody else think. And right. as a, even though today, like I'm a parent now. That's something I always took with me that, you know, as a parent, you should always support your kids. Right. There's no perfect way to be a parent, but I think you just, if you love them and you support them, whatever they want to do, you know, that'll go a long way. So I, I grew up with the mindset of like, my mom believe in me. I don't really care what nobody else thinks. Absolutely. And, I, and, and I'm, a, I'm a parent too that believe in that unless y'all want to do some dumb shit. You know, you want to, you want to be the next El Chapo, nigga, I ain't got nothing for you. I, I can't support that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because for me, as long as you're doing something productive and you're trying to better yourself every day, I could always be there for you as a parent. But, you know, I had, like, I got a son, my son Cheese, you know, 
he he wanted to be in the streets. He wanted to be out here getting locked up. He wanted to, he thought he was going to be the, you know the next motherfucking El Chapo. You know what I'm saying? And I had to and you know I had to I had to cut him off. I'm just being Crazy, real. Man. I had to cut him off. I had to I had to because I told him I told him what was going to happen. And if you know, I always felt like my kids never had to look outside of nobody else to for a role model. You feel what I'm saying? Because y'all always had me. And y'all was always, like, proud of who your dad was. Yeah, my dad, Gilly. Like, we go to powwows. My kids just walk backstage and walk up on everybody at 8. What's up, Rick Ross? My dad, Gilly. Your dad, Gilly. <laughs> oh, what, what's why up? do you keep hyping your name? What, up? Oh, you, nigga, some you, you, know, you know who I was, You was nigga. doing bars. You, you was know doing I, shows okay, and bars that's and cool. stuff. That's cool. You was doing playground that's shows cool. and shit. That's like, how you on, feel man. when you miss the ride. I'm just saying, you was doing like little kid, you was doing When you, like, you, like, like, you miss the ride, this is how you feel. You doing shows and daycares and shit. they always felt like they didn't have to go out inside of nobody else. Yeah, he was rapping. He wanted anybody to hear his music. The kids out there, like they'd be playing in the yard. You see the gay, he just start rapping. <laughs> get down on the ground. They like, how? Why would I get? Down? I don't want to play on the ground. I'm playing on the swings. Mister's crazy. They got to escort him from the gate. But you acting like you did a re you did bars. You performed in bars. All right, man. that's cool. I did a I'm lot of. Saying, you there. said like, I'm, yeah, can but, I had to catch me? Like, I, well, yeah, let me I'm, tell you something I'm, about them bars. Gilly, my dad. bars. Dad is bars. Them bars. The bar rapper. Them bars pay a lot of money. Dude. I mean, he doing you know playgrounds I mean? and bars and stuff. But so for me, I always felt as though, you know, they didn't have to look outside of nobody else. So when you get to a certain age and it's like, I can't wait. The coolest nigga you know can't give you advice no more. Right. Oh, yeah. so you feel what I'm saying? To me, it was like, okay, cool. I got I to let you bump your head. I have to let you go through some shit to understand that what I'm telling you is real. So, you know, he had to bump his head, had to get locked up, had to catch a case, had to sit in that courtroom and watch that lady up there decide what was going to happen with his fucking life, and that'll really change you. You know what I'm saying? If if you really don't want to be in those situations, that'll really change you. So, you know, for me, I'm always for the, you know, supporting your kids, but they got to be doing the right shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but your mom, you know, even when you was in college and, you know, you, you kind of seen through the TV the kind of relationship you had with your mom. You feel what I'm saying? It was like, you know, okay, yeah, you know, they they, they went through a struggle together, They, but they close-knit, you know, can't nothing really come in between what they got going on, and that's a beautiful thing. Man, let's get into some juicy shit. Top five players in the league right now. Yeah, who the top five? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, he said that like he'll. He said that like he'll fuck with Bron. Bron. No, <laughs> no he stamped Bron. I think Bron, KD. Mm. Bron, KD. Don't be humble. Mm. Don't be humble. Steph. Mm. James. Mm. How you ain't say you? How you don't say you? I don't. I'm just saying. He like, might see himself as like the seventh or eighth. He's still young. No man. He's still. He's I think for me, I I really, I re the guys at the top. I really respect the the guys that got championships. Okay. So okay. I get a nod to the people. Uh, everybody in that top five got a championship. Yeah, he got a point. Who? James Harden different. James Harden don't have one, but he is different. Who who who's the who's the hardest person for you to guard in the league? Who give you problems? Like you when you up against him, you like I know this motherfucker's he's fast, or he got a hell of a wingspan, his jumpers. I just know that I, it's gonna be some shit tonight. I mean, there's a lot of guys in the league that got. But who's got the games. hardest? Okay, who's the top three hardest players to guard for you? See, for me as a point guard, who would have been somebody like Steph Curry? Because he's not that fast, but he herky-jerky, and then he shoot good, and then you feel what I'm saying? So yeah. he's crafty. It's like, okay, if you a player, you just move at one pace, okay, I know how to. But when you got the motherfuckers who herky-jerky, like like my man sitting over there, 
<laughs> you know, you you go one way, did, did he get your body leaning one way, did he come back the other way and you the fuck out of bounds? So <laughs> it's like, uh, that type of shit's hard to guard. Then Steph. Okay. So we, we, we played a game this year. Steph had 47. And you had something cr- cr- ridiculous too, right? That game, right? Yeah. Was you had like 44 or something? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm a statistician. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think, you know, something about Steph, he, he moved well without the ball. He, he get off the ball, and they know they know when to find him. And it's like anytime he get it, he look at the rim, you, you might jump because you think he's going to shoot it. Right. And he's shooting it from the parking lot. So you got to, like, get up on him. And he look at the basket, you're like, oh, shit. Because Steph, to me, Steph is one of the only players in the league as far as offensive wise, has everything. But this is what I'm gonna say to you: like, okay, you got to play like JJ Redick, right? He gonna pass the ball. He gonna run around eight screens to get open. Steph could do that. Steph could break you down off the. You feel what I'm saying and get to his own shot. He can do that. A lot of players that be great one on one players that could just cook you. They don't really be. Pass the ball, run off six screens, catch the ball, fire. You feel what I'm saying? They more of, they know how to set their shot up. Two dribbles, step back. Boom. You feel what I'm saying? One dribble, uh, crossover, down the lane. But those players don't be the greatest at, I'm going to pass you the ball, I'm going to run around six niggas, my five, my four teammates, and two of your niggas. Come off, catch that shit, and fire. You feel what I'm saying? So I look at Steph as, he got to be hard to guard because he do everything. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whereas though a player like KD is also probably hard as shit to guard, but he ain't got to do none of that. He don't got to run off a screen, catch. He just can get you at 17 feet, turn around. He longer than a motherfucker. Just... You know what I'm saying? So for me, I understand when you say Steph, but who else is, though? who's the other two? I mean, Steph, KD, uh, I would say probably Kai or James Harden. Kyrie Irving? Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. Okay. Three years from now, where do you see yourself being at? I'm 23 or 26. That's when your prime hitting. Mm. Mm. That's when you're you, you going to be the strongest you ever been. Your jumper going to be the silkiest it's ever been. I'm talking about your moves now. It's just like I, I done did this so many times. It's just, you know, where you see your head in three years? In three years, like you said, uh, my body will be a lot different than what it is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as as Pooh would say, I got, a lot, I got a lot to work on. He always tells me I ain't. Sure. Oh, so what you saying? Pooh ain't one of them people that stroke your ego. He will know you the shit, but still he gonna attack your weaknesses. He because you the shit, <laughs> you know. So for Pooh to still be, you know, nigga, you garbage. It's like what? I just had sixty. I'm the youngest player to ever score sixty. When I had sixty, what the fuck are you talk about, Pooh? <laughs> when I had sixty, he came and shook my hand. He was like. Like you, right. you getting better, like but, nigga. But, but, what? But, but you can't really, you can't really take what Pooh say for you know, like power put a lot of power into it because he hate on my game, you know. Like, <laughs> but, because Pooh know you ain't shit, bro. You was the water boy up the prison, man. Like, come on, bro. Lil J, Lil J. As I'm making a five in, in this room, as I'm making your five, if you picking, including you, you got to pick somebody. You got to go in the court. in this room. Yeah, as I'm getting, ho ho ho. As I'm getting, as I'm getting on the five, cause you seen my game. You, is you picking me? Well, I think you was the one that was at the park. You had on mismatched shoes, a Sonics jersey, and some and some Houston Rockets. No, shorts. that's to throw it off. Everybody I, know anybody by, that come it, with it, all it that shit on is garbage. It throw everybody you off. know it throw you off. Every, that was the whole. It was no. a whole trick. It was magical. At, cause when I'm wait, 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 they done. They look at seeing all the colors and they like, <laughs> they like, oh, he. he like, like nobody would like. I'm, I'm having a lot of problems with guys, you know, because a lot of guys' games is mentioned at the mind. KD said, KD said, you asked KD about your game. He said, I, I, I liked your wardrobe. He wanted to give me my. He gave me my props. So no, I, he didn't. He said you a fucking bum. He said he see, did, That's did he, what he said. Oh, did he or did he not say? Damn, I be seeing you out there with your J Wallow. 
Did he say no, that? he didn't say that. Oh, you ain't hearing that. No, no, you probably ain't no, hearing that. And Rashad. it's crazy that 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 Jason's sitting here. He trying to. He don't want to tell you you're a fucking bum. What do you, he, you, you he, said he was a water boy in prison. Yeah, he was a water boy in prison. He used to run and get get Raheem and Boo Boo and all them niggas. They waters and shit. Soon as soon as was a I little bridge. I was a lifeguard. And he was a lifeguard in the prison showers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so he was a nigga. Was a lifeguard. You lying on me, man? You lying? But, but hold up. As we right now, let's get into something that's very important. Over, you know, over two million men worldwide trust Manscaped. One thing about Manscaped, hold up. Let me make a pubic service announcement. The thing about Manscaped is this. If you want to be clean in the area that, you know, the women is going to look at you different, be like, oh, my God, this guy was clean. And one thing it do about you, you got to take care of your, you know, your garden. You got to make sure you, you, you mow the lawn. That's why you got to use the lawnmower, you know, 4.0, you know what I mean, with the spotlight on it. So when you when you cleaning yourself up and they got the spotlight on it, you making sure you getting everything, you cleaning your areas. Because I remember one time I was in the shower and I was using the razor and things didn't turn out quite right. You know, the water turned red. And um, it was just a real hard journey, even just the growing back of it, you know, the whole, I try to clean myself up and it just wasn't right. So what you need to do is you need to go to Manscaped. Dot com, right? Go to manscaped.com and use the code million, right? And what's going to happen, you're going to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide. I'm talking about worldwide. Manscaped is going to take care of you. They took care of me. You know, they always take care of me and they make sure that I'm right when it's that time. When it's time for me to perform, I'm at my top performance. You know why? Because I'm clean cut and everything is right. Manscaped.com slash, you know what I mean? Code million. That's what you do. You go there and I'm telling you right now, they're going to take care of you, man. You know, I'm talking about they're going to take care of you. So when you you laying down with that that special woman, she like, oh my god, I see I see you mowed your lawn, and and she's going to look at you different. She's going to approach her whole approach to you is going to be different. Once again, check out manscape.com code million. What are you waiting for? I'm get yourself clean. Yeah, but uh, I will say this. Uh, you know, we got to ask you this. The top 10 greatest players of all time. Top 10. Top 10 is hard. Mm. Um, oh, man, come on. Because you got to think, I was born in 98, so I didn't see all them people that played in the 60s, 70s. Well, you don't got to listen. If you don't, if you don't believe in the dinosaurs, that's cool. <laughs> all of them. Well, you can go all, yeah. you can go all modern day if you want. <laughs> Talking about like my era when Mike and them was playing. That's like when I was really. But go ahead. I will say anybody that don't have Mike, Brian, and Kobe in their top five, I really have a hard time listening to him. Right. My, hold up. Mike, Brian, Kobe, mm-hmm. Shaq? You can. I think four or five is very interchangeable. Them three, I think those three are is cemented. Like, nobody okay. should ever. I think Shaq that. was the most dominant player to ever played the game. He was, for sure. He could be four. Like, if somebody said he was four. No, I'm, I'm just saying my person. I don't want to talk you into your person. You want to leave Big Shaq daddy out, you can leave we Shaq daddy. We need seven more from you. Mike, Brian, and Kobe. Or Mike, Kobe, Brian. Either or. Uh, Mike, Kobe, Brian. You put Brian. You put Kobe in front of Brian. I would just because he's a Kobe. He, he, I grew up Kobe. That's why I started. I mean, I I, started I, I I grew up Kobe too. Rest in peace to Kobe. But LeBron James is the second greatest player ever played the game. And if somebody said, I wouldn't be mad. I oh, okay. I, I, he could be number two. Oh, okay, cool. Just set the record straight. I mean. <laughs> Because at hey, the, Kobe, at, Kobe from Philly, uh, Lower Marion. I'm just saying. Pooh, he always Lower, hating. I'm not hate. Lower Marion, bro. That's not Philly. If a nigga came in here right now and said I'm from Philly, what part Lower Marion? We'd be like, uh, nigga, you're not from Philly, nigga. You're from the county. Let's be for real. So we're not going to change that because that's Kobe. Like I'm a real all the time, not some of the time. But, if a nigga came in here right now and said he's from Upper Darby. Nigga, you ain't from Philly. You from 69th Street. <laughs> I'm just saying. Am I, am I telling the truth, Pooh? Well, Let's keep it real. When, when, it, when, it, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl and Kobe was celebrating with the Eagles jersey on. No, the Eagles represent. Have a problem. No, the Eagles represent Philadelphia. They represent the suburbs of Philadelphia. They represent South Jersey and Delaware. Delaware. So everybody from that area could root from the Eagles. But that's like when a person is from Norristown and they like, I'm from Philly. That was a great moment. You know one thing I loved about that when Pooh Pooh was standing there on the logo of the Celtics with that Eagles jersey on. That was a classic moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was classic. Cause he didn't abandon where he was from, you know. He was, you know. Yeah. 
You abandoned the Sixers, but that's, that's some other story. shit. That's some whole <laughs> other shit. You know what I mean? You used to play at the Sixers Arena. You you gonna abandon them? You had some of your greatest games at the Sixers Arena. How do you gonna do that? But that's some other stuff. Another story. We need the other seven. <laughs> In no order, I got Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. Bird. Mm. No, no order. Mm. Shaq, Hakeem, Tim Duncan. You picking all big hey guys. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. It's about three more left. Uh, two more. Two more. Mm. Kareem, Kareem, I'm tripping. Kareem, Kareem Abdul Jordan. You done picked seven centers. He scored a million points. And he, he did didn't shoot but, one trade ball. I'm gonna keep it all the way real though. Kareem played a million years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. Like, but I'm yeah, the same thing bro, if you played 26 years, you're supposed to be the league's leading scorer. Nobody else knees lasted that long. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had reversible knees or some shit. He played. <laughs> he was playing in the ABA, some shit, like back in the. When the Milwaukee Bucks wasn't even the Bucks yet, they was the Milwaukee yeah. Dollars. Or <laughs> so, like, but it's the same thing. Bron, Bron gonna end up playing twenty some odd years, twenty years probably. Yeah, Bron is built a little different too. Like Bron, Bron got some. I don't know what type of knees Bron got either, but Bron got some. I don't know, you know, because he's still running like he in year three. Like, so yeah, but but and when it's all said and done, Bron's gonna be the all time leading scorer. Probably so. And he's going to be the top of the list probably in all-time leading assists and rebounds and a, bu a bunch of shit. For sure. And the reason why, and I understand the greatness of everybody else, but nobody had the amount of pressure that LeBron James had coming into the league, man. You know, imagine being an 18-year-old kid coming to a team that won 13 games last year and they, nobody in that locker room thought you was going to turn shit around. Let's be for real. They like, oh, this 18-year-old kid going to come in here and do something. Then the first practice, he dunked on the center. Boom! They said, oh, shit. Yeah. And then they won 30-something games the next season. And only person y'all added was an 18-year-old kid. Like, the greatness of LeBron James is different, bro. He took Mo Williams, Ilgowskis, uh, Williams, Larry man. Hughes. Come on, bro. We talk about C-class yeah. players. You would not be like, oh, we just traded for Mo Williams. We going to the chip. Like, let's just be for real. Larry Hughes from St. Louis. Too. Larry Hughes is my guy. Play for the Sixers. Absolutely. But LeBron took all those guys to the finals, man, and none of them was even an all-star. He got LeBron stamp. Right. So stamped. that's why, to me, after Jordan is, is Bron and then, you know. Whoever you want to pick. But who's your last two? There's one more. One more. Mm. Get into something when you say that. I, I guess Bill Russell. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just let this. I'm gonna let it go. Let me get I'm into. Let, let it go. I don't care. He played on a team. It was only eight teams in the league, and they had all the ringers. Like I'm gonna keep it on real. Shout out to Bill Russell. I love you, Bill. You wasn't that good. You was averaging like 16 points on a team that had 11 All Stars, 11 great players. I love what you stand for, but we not gonna make it seem like. Come on, man. Shaq would have dunked. Bill Russell in the court. That's come on, man. Like I, I'm, I'm not with giving a motherfucker putting putting a person up there. Cause did I say Shaq? It's what he stood for. And man, Bill averaged 17 points. Man, Shaq said to be a dominant center in the league, you at least got to average 28. You can't. Bill Russell can't control when he was born. No, neither could neither, neither could Will Chamberlain. He was putting up 50s. The same era, mm. you didn't put Will in there, but you put Bill in there. Wait, Will had a Beanie Seagull in the game. <laughs> like, he had a whole Beanie Seagull in the game. Like, we seen Kobe give 81. We seen it. We got footage of Bill that. had 19 more points, man. Ain't no footage of that. I ain't say he didn't do it. I'm just saying. We, 
is only what you can imagine. Damn, he had a bean, a whole seagull. Like, wait, Bill, wait, will average fifty a game? <laughs> yes, nobody has ever averaged fifty, but will we go put Bill in front of? I think will. will? I think will spike the books. And will will and will had twenty thousand. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't believe you. I don't believe that. I don't believe that body counting guy. If you with that type wait, of body wait, wait. count, you're not playing no basketball. You're not doing nothing in life. <laughs> How do you get a body count like that? So I think Will probably spiked right. the books and some of the other stuff is not real because he's lying on that. Rest in peace to the great, great Rest Will. Rest in peace to you, but I think he, he was spiked. Had, but I will say this. No, I'm not slamming his name. He ain't here talking about I'm he don't saying, believe the numbers on your piece. Yeah, I, I ain't not, calculating not, the numbers on a man's piece, I'm not man. calculating the man's piece. That shit is, saying, man. You're calculating the numbers that's off. on that man's it piece, man. It just a little off. But I will say this. And this hating. How can how can a man tell you he bleeds this man? I don't believe you. I'm just saying it just he was the crazy. hottest thing on the planet. It don't matter. You you're not doing about? nothing else in life. You're not training. You're not doing nothing. If you just you just laying around all day. For, you know what I mean? For years on street. One thing blazing. we know for two things is Will would have played in this era. He would have been over at Kimber Crib. We know that. I'm gonna say this though. I'm gonna say this though. I will say this. I, I, will, just, I, will, I will say this. This is what I will say though. Cuz I will say this. For all you guys out there that never make it to a halftime show and your lady is wondering, she always got an attitude, she always being rude, she's not feeling what you got going on, you need to get with Roman Swipes. One thing about Roman Swipes, all you got to do is wipe it on, let it dry, and you're going to make it fly. I'm telling you, this I'm is stuff about, that, I'm telling you, this, this stuff right here is amazing. These wipes, mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you don't need no prescription, None. clinically proven, mm. I'm talking about top notch. They will have you going from a two-quarter man to a four-quarter man. I'm talking about, matter of fact, overtime. They'll call you overtime. Mm. You'll be the you'll be the overtime man because your your performance will be next level. I'm talking about top level. What you need to do is you need to go to getroman.com slash game. Getroman.com slash game. And for your first month of swipes, you'll get it for five dollars when you choose a monthly plan. But once again, a lot of you guys, y'all, y'all, y'all not getting the proper respect from y'all women because y'all underperforming. And you know why you underperforming? Because you don't got the swipes. So you can't do what you need to do and go to the next level. Yeah, we're gonna blaze, we're gonna bless the whole Boston Celtics team with the swipes. Yeah, so. that, yeah, dude. You know, I got, yeah, a, I got man. a couple, a couple guys was in my DM to ask me about the swipes. No, I mean, I got a call. We got a call from Roman. Twin. He said Pooby tapping out early. Yeah, man, all the time. So he be going out in the second quarter. <laughs> <laughs> she Pooh, like, she like, wait, this only halftime, Pooh. You still gotta. <laughs> yeah, you keep talking all this basketball stuff, all this fourth quarter stuff. You trying to be a coach of the game? You, you better coach yourself and get some Roman swipes. <laughs> So one thing about it, Roman is, you know, is waiting for you. But once again, all you got to do is go to GetRoman.com slash game. And your first month, $5 when you choose a monthly plan. Now, I want to get into my, my top ten. A lot of people who understand I'm a sports a historian on the low, especially when it comes to basketball. Me having a game, and there's a lot of guys, a lot of honorable mentions that these dudes didn't mention. So I want to mention my, my players. Uh, my ten is uh, – uh, Lottie Devox, Bill Lambeer. First of all, his name, hold wait, 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 wait. First of all, his name Vladi. You know, just, Lottie this nigga D just said Lottie Devox. No, no, I said Lottie Devox. You just mispronounced. Uh, Dirk. Uh, I said Dirk. Uh, Lottie Devox. I said that's how. That's what I call him because we know each other. Lottie uh, Dottie. Huh? Listen, <laughs> listen, hold up. Listen you used to call him Lottie hold, Dottie hold, when he scored. That's Lottie just, Dottie. Just, just listen to my ten. Bill Lambeer, uh, Muggsy Bogues, Larry Johnson, Sean Kemp, Isaiah Thomas. Uh, Clyde Drexter, Carl Malone. That's like my, you know. My nigga, you just said Clyde Drexter. <laughs> you know I'm just saying that's that was these players that I I grew up on. Like I think these do, especially Sean Kemp. You know how you know Sean Kemp. I know why you like Carl Malone because you had them nasty ass LA gears he came out with. Them bitches was nasty. No, Pooh had them. Pooh used to play ball down the uh, what's name with them in the park. <laughs> Pooh had them Jones. He used to be light all the night time. He wouldn't come down. Ah, look at my ah, look at my feet. No, come on, Pooh. Come on, them Jones was nasty. But that's my guy. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely my guy. So, big dog lover, man. That's one thing yeah, we know man. about Jason Tatum, man. Like, you missing Zuko and Lennox? We heard you was seven, you know, six, seven with the lowest dog in the country. <laughs> <laughs> you walking around. <laughs> we had a we had a boxer when I was like uh, I was like four or five. The boxer was too big. I used to try to walk him. Pulled me off the porch one day and I fell. So then I, my mom was like, "No, nah, the dog too big. We gotta get a small one." So we got one of them Yorkie, one of them Taco Bell. Oh dogs. my god! Mm -hmm. And when I was, uh, 
I was in sixth grade and he was little. So anytime we used to open the door, he used to try to run out run out the house. So you had to open the door, put your foot in, like where the crack is, and then walk out. But I had one of my teammates was over the house because we was going to a game. And it ain't, it's not funny. He opened the door. The dog ran outside. But he ran out, he ran outside all the time. He normally run under the car. He ran to the street. Mm. He ran in the street. It's so hard to say goodbye. And, 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 and it was over. To you got, yesterday. You did, did you, did, as, as a kid, did you have a funeral for him, bury him and anything? Mm-hmm. Damn, that was, that, was a, that was a tough day. And then. Yeah, you tapping into his emotions right now. Yeah, he about yeah, to crowd with Lil Zuko. We, uh, we got another boxer. Lennox. Lennox. Lennox died. Lennox lived, he, he was like 11 though, so he was around for a minute. Yeah, because 11 is like 69 in dog years. Like, mm-hmm. I got a uh, a tattoo. Me and my mom is the first tattoo she got uh, on her hand with a heart with a dog print. Uh, I got this like two years ago. So do you got a dog now? I got two dogs. I got another boxer. Like them boxers. Reed, and then I got a French bulldog uh, that I got from Philly. Mm, okay. Name Bean. Okay, yeah, you got one of them little expensive, little ugly little motherfuckers. Yeah, well, well, if you ever need, I got a what's name? I I trained. Good. Like I got, I got one that been seventeen thousand on from Philly. Yeah, yeah, I got one of them little ugly motherfuckers at the crib. Too. I train dog. I train Gill Dog Million. So if you ever need, I, I do dog training. No, we don't. Too. What? The no, dog, we don't. The, the, dog be the dog shitting was, everywhere. Dog gonna have no type of home training at all. Don't believe that shit because you know he might actually give you a check. You know. So he trained dogs. He trained dogs. He DJ inspirational. Oh no, no, he 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 got a bunch of he he Mexican. He got a bunch of jobs. I'm slash. They used to call me slash. He was the, I, I, especially I in the prison. Oh no, he but, raised, but raised but he, on my Come jacket. on, bro. You was you was the, the lifeguard in the showers. You was the cook. You used to cook for five thousand inmates, right? Yeah, I was a chef up north. Right. That was my job. I worked in the kitchen. Okay, yeah, I was you was a chef. you was the water boy at the prison games. No, right? No, I wasn't that. My homie just asked me to get him a cup of water when he was playing one time. <laughs> that don't qualify as a, as a water boy. Big Raheem was like, yo, go get me a drink. All right, cool, I got you. I ain't want to go back and forth with him. He was a big guy. I'm just, when he got him a drink, he was overheated playing basketball. Oh, okay. That, don't, that's you what I, I don't, I'm not, that's not what part of my. You know, he was a pimp in jail, too. Oh, my God, he lying on me. No, he had, come on, bro. This is what y'all do all day. No, yeah, he, he had Ricky Minaj. And he had another <laughs> named Lil Him. Yeah, I mean, not, I think, Lil, listen, not Lil Kim. He had Lil one, Him one thing I and Ricky this, Minaj. One thing about this boy, he's a habitual liar, bro. I don't. <laughs> That's a word, too. When they called me, they like, wow, Lou making all the money up to prison. He, he, he pimping and shit. I'm like, all right. You know, he's staying out the way, he getting his books up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that meant a lot to me. Uh, you know, that took stress off me having to, uh, to sock it to your books every month because you was up there doing your thing. And, you know, I could appreciate your hustle. Yeah. You know, coming from. I had a couple pr- hustles, man. I was selling uh, peppers and onions and stuff like that, green and white. So, you know, I had a couple nice occupations up in, up, up in jail. So, you know. So now. Playoff time. Y'all used to see me in Boston sitting on the floor. Y'all used to be whipping the shit out the six. You was there. Meek was there. Yep. Kevin Hart was there. Yep. Michael Kevin. Rubin. Yep. Uh, we, we Gucci sent, we, man. We sent them home early. Yeah, y'all, y'all, sent, y'all sent us home early. Talk, talk. Um, listen, I want him to talk the heaviest that he can talk. You hear me? Because... It's a new time, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Big Morty Full Guy. You know who you got to go through. We all know who the playoffs is going through. Really? Big Morty Full Guy. Joel Embiid. I know that's your man. Y'all work out in the summertime together. You know, Drew Hanlon and all that. Like, uh, you think y'all going to send us home this year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, y'all don't have no interior players. Y'all got um, uh, what's the little the, the new kid, Robert? Uh, yeah, that's my man. Yeah, no, he he could be he like nass. He need but to if you, eat. If you he watch- he need to eat some more tacos. <laughs> <laughs> He's like <nass>. taco. <laughs> if you yeah. if you watch every time we play Philly in the playoffs, and Bead always did his thing, and I want to say something. Every time we play Philly. Real ones in Philly root for the Celtics. 
No, no, no. What type of shit is that? The real ones in Philly. Got, the, no, no, no. The real no ones root for the Celtics. Only got time it. I root for the Celtics is if y'all win a chip, because my team, I, my teams change every year. But if y'all win a chip, that's my team. I'm just gonna be straight up. I'm putting it out. We there. got poop. You know, all right. know. And we had we had Mook on our team. So we the, had, the twin. We had all FOE. Every time we came to Philly, oh, he did have Mook. Okay, twin. so listen. They had twin up there. Twin used to be looking over from the bench, laughing and all that. That's cool. Y'all got out. Of, we had to, we had to get a chance to grow a little bit. Keith, to, Keith used to come to the game court side and root for the uh, root for us. That's three niggas, man. I got three people. Pooh and the twins, man. But uh, they, they, they carry Pooh, a lot of weight. Uh, uh, new, new, th they do. But newsflash, uh, them niggas was getting paid by Boston. <laughs> <laughs> newsflash, Pooh couldn't be over there like yeah, when or no turn around jumper from it beat. So. Uh, he's supposed to be rooting because uh, Boston is not. They ain't rooting. They routing that fucking check to his account. <laughs> <laughs> like so, the no, the majority was rooting for the Sixers, and we ain't. We, that's what even that, though even though Mook from Philly, you was rooting for the Sixers. When nobody on the Sixers is from Philly. Is from Philly. No, no, see, no, no, see, no, no, see, no, hold no. up. I will Everybody say this. from the Sixers from Philly. Once you get there, well, when I go, until you no, leave, no, no, listen, no, listen, until no. you leave, hold you, up, hold you, up. You, 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 I will you, say you play this. for the Sixers. Hell, no. I will say this. He know this. I didn't been to games with Gil and anybody that I see that play for a team. I'm, I'm going with that team. I just do that. You know, like when I seen uh, Lou Will come because Lou Will from Philly. If you play for Philly, you, you are the Bagley Philly, and I'm calling yo. You remember when I was down there? Yeah, he was down there lying. Told me he used to be the twins trainer and shit. I did. I think I I did a little. Like, come on, man. I did. You know, back in the day, Pooh know my. I was training a lot of players in the city. That's another story. Fuck it. No, no. Here. Listen. So I'm sitting there. I'm telling this older white guy. He like, oh my god. I said, yeah, I should train him. You know what I mean? Look, and then I messed up because I told him little league basketball. I didn't, yeah, the, it, it, it ain't no the white league. guy was biting on it too. He's like, no, I used to train, and we sit in front of you. I used to train twins. He was like, oh my them. god, let me take a picture with you. He was like, yeah, when they, 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 they was in little league basketball, the white guy was like, no, 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 I messed up. The fuck? <laughs> no, this guy's lying. This guy ain't never trained no fucking body. So listen, man, playoff time. Y'all lighting the ass. I'm just keeping it real. Tristan Thompson, Robert Williams. I'm just saying, y'all lighting the ass when it comes to stopping big motherfucker. Then Ben Simmons, uh, I'm a statistician. You shoot 33% when Ben Simmons guard you. <laughs> I'm just saying you shoot 33% from the field when Ben guarding you. Can you do me a favor? I'm just saying. Go ahead. Can both of y'all do me a favor? Go ahead. When we play them in the playoffs, can y'all just make sure y'all there? I'm gonna, you know I'll I'm going to be there. And you, I'm telling you, I'm letting you know. If y'all winning, I'm going to cheer for y'all. I'm just letting <laughs> you know. That's, that's just my style. Like, I, I, I just want to understand this. Like, I just want to get this out Did there, you just right? say that shit? Man? Yeah, I got to because I just want to be real because I'm not like, I'm not going to be saying my team's a loser. My teams win every year. Every Tampa Bay, that's my, they won. My, te <laughs> my teams win. I'm just being straight up. Like for all y'all people out there that want to be holding on to teams, y'all losers. <laughs> team lose, oh, that's my team. We'll do it next year. I'm doing it this year. So whatever team, I'm going to get me a jersey, get my name on the back, all that. I'm doing the whole process. I'm, if, you know, I might go to the parade, y'all. If it, if it, if it happened, whatever happened, now, if I'm there, we celebrate. I'm just being straight up. I'm not waiting for a team to keep. Y'all think y'all going to keep losing 10 years in a row and we keep but talking that, about next that, year. But when they finally the win, that's what, like when the Eagles well, you finally you wait won. for that. You be the loser. That's a loser life. I'm not living a loser <laughs> life. Waiting for a team to win. I'm dealing with the winners right now. So every year my team won. I, like, okay, so yeah. so you saying if if he play another five years in Boston and they don't win nothing, then he might as well get out of there and come to the Sixers, right? Yeah, he could do that if the Sixers win. I come, I come to Philly. I come to Philly in the summertime. Like you already seen my celebration last when the Lakers won. I was crying and everything. I, that's my you know. oh, for some nuts, you for no reason at all. Don't none of them niggas know you. <laughs> you talk about you talk about shout out to Allen Caruso. I'm like Allen, nigga, what? <laughs> Take a name, Alex. Shout out to Allen. You done made him to a brother and all this shit. Like you don't be knowing what you be talking about, nah, listen, man. They won. I know that. All like, I need to know is they won and I got a jersey. Like, that's it. Like, let me ask you this question. Who career would you rather have? Charles Barkley or Robert Ory's? Mm, mm. A great that never won nothing? Or an average nigga that won a bunch of them? You 
could have said Robert Ory and AI. Oh. Is that the same? <sighs> I think Charles and, and Chuck and AI both got MVP. Yeah, you could say Robert Ory and AI if you want to throw it and in. Charles Barkley all day. If you ask me if I want to be Robert Ory or Allen Iverson, Allen Iverson? I'm just saying, some people want to go with the chips. Now, okay. me personally, Bubba Chuck is my favorite player of all that. time. I'm not doing that. I think that's a little, the chips is not. It's cool when I'm watching it, but me being a player, I'm not going for that. I told you about this shit before. What? I just don't I just don't feel cool. Somebody you sweat and grab me, you're pouring champagne on me. I'm not a stripper. So I'm not going through that whole process of so, we winning and y'all want to pour champagne on me and all this dumb ass shit. So no. Wait, so wait, so you don't want to win a chip because you don't want niggas to pour champagne on and you? And be grabbing me? That's a little that's a little different, man. You sweating wet grabbing me, pouring champagne on me. <laughs> with your shirt, you ain't got no shirt on. You walking around the joint he with said your I ain't a stripper. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. I'd rather be barking. I'd rather get close to winning. Do you know what Barkley would have did to fill that champagne, burn his eyes? You think man? Barkley wanted somebody to be treating him like a stripper? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barkley would have loved for that champagne to uh -huh. burn his eyeball. That's what they I live could imagine. for. Ah. You can't wait for that champagne. But, to, see, but no. you know what? Y'all knew modern day. Y'all got cute and shit. Mike and them didn't have no goggles, man. Bird and them didn't have no goggles, yeah, man. Y'all got goggles on this shit. Oh, it's so cold. Ooh, no, Mike took that eye. shit to the eyeballs. Yeah, he was different. Mike was different. Burnt this shit all up. For sure. Six Bye. times, too. Left out of their eyeballs, drunk. <laughs> shit looking all different colorways. Like, y'all got soft, man. But you can't. Yeah, everybody want to win championships. But I think it's just. The gap is too big between Robert Ory and AI. Like everybody grew up wanting to be like AI. Cut the, yes, they cut did. The, you cut your socks and put on your arm, yeah, wear a sleeve. Like AI, that is like it's beyond basketball. Okay, like, but that's why I said Barkley. Everybody didn't want to be like Barkley. <laughs> so who career was you picking, Barkley or Robert Ory? Is you taking seven chips, or are you taking a bunch of highlights, a bunch of stats, some some All Star games, a MVP? It depends. Do you think Charles Barkley is content with his career, or you think he got regrets? Every great that ain't win no chip got a regret. That was. I nice. don't. I don't care how much you lie. If you was in the top ten players in the league and you wasn't able to get over the hill, it's a regret there. That was my team back God then. Damn, I let. I let they, that they were nigga so close. I was rocking me. with them. That's when Barkley was my favorite player. Dan Marley, Cedric Sabalas, Kevin Johnson. Oh, you know, that was my squad back then. I just want to throw that. That's out. like. Melo just Melo just got in top ten in scoring. Melo got regrets. You think Melo don't want them eyeballs burning? Melo's still old school. If Me if the Portland win a chip, Melo's taking that champagne to the eyeballs. <laughs> He's not putting no goddamn goggles. He got, he gonna pour it in his eyeball. He went that, that chip so bad. Ah, oh, it feels so good. <laughs> yes. But even if he don't win a chip, he's still in the Hall he of Fame. He got regrets. He got twenty eight thousand points. A lot. And regrets. He would have took 17,000 in the chip. That's a, that's a personal accomplishment, though. 28,000 points? Yeah, that's personal. Bro, we play this game as athletes. We, we play this 10. game to know, get to the top personal. of the mountain. But, but dudes want to win the chip. I, Every year, what's your goal? To win the championship. That's it, right? But if you don't win, that don't mean, like, if you if you go to your whole career, y'all love AI. I'm, you shit. probably yeah, would yeah. never say oh nothing God. bad No, 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 AI. no, no. AI won the chip when he stepped over to Ron Lou. That was our that was, chip. That was Philly chip. That was our chip. When he stepped up, because let's be for real, the Lakers didn't lose one game in the playoffs. Except for that one. Except for that one when Chuck stepped over to Ron Lou. Get up, nigga. What? We won the chip that day. We didn't expect to win no more games. We, but that was our chip. See, that's a loser's lifestyle. Hey, <laughs> sometimes. Lakers was my team that year, too. Well, sometimes, sometimes you got to know what you're up against. Like, that's what I'm trying to tell him about Big Mutafuka this year. You got to know what you're up against. So you just started your online store and you're doing what you love, selling products to people you want, and the orders are coming in fast. Now, the hard part, shipping. What you need to do is you need to get with ShipStation. One thing about ShipStation, listen, they'll take care of everything, you need, no matter what you're selling and where you're selling at. I'm talking about Amazon, SD, your own website. ShipStation funnel all your orders into one simple interface that you can manage 
from anywhere, even your cell phone. Think about that. Even your cell phone, you get, I'm talking about ship station, you get even work on your cell phone. How easy is that? I don't get, and, and guess what? I'm talking about no matter what, no, what carrier you want to use, what well, damn, I want to use this carrier, I want to use that carrier, it don't even matter. UPS, I'm talking about FedEx, United States Postal Service. I'm talking about easily, I'm talking about compare carriers and choose the best solution every time. I'm talking about that's how easy it is. We're talking about ShipStation. What you need to do, you need to use code GAME. Go to ShipStation.com, click the microphone, get the top of the page, and type in GAME, G-A-M-E. And guess what? You're going to get a 60-day trial free. What are you waiting for? I'm talking about this easy shipping. And you already, you're doing your thing. You got things happening for your website or for Amazon or whatever you're doing. But listen, use ShipStation.com. Use the code GAME and get 60 days free. What are you waiting for? You know, y'all kicked our asses all the mother years, but this ain't the mother years. This 2021. The, the answer would be yes, I would rather win championships. But if you you said Robert Ori or AI, I'm just thinking as a player, like, yeah, I, want, I would rather be AI. But, you, of course, everybody want to win. Oh, so you're saying Robert Ori, but Barkley, you want Robert Ori. I, I would I still pick <laughs> I pick all Barkley. <laughs> He, you threw AI in there. The question was Barkley. You said you switched it up on me. He started interviewing me. So what about AI? Because AI, like, wait, hold on. AI and Chuck, that's two different people. (laughs) Everybody wanted to be AI. I ain't ain't watched Charles Barkley play. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you kind of young. So you uh, we could understand you not seeing Charles, but you seeing AI. Like at the end of the day, you. But your answer was, if it was Charles Barkley, you would rather be Robert Ory. if you picking players, I pick Charles Barkley. But if you just be like player, no, a, no, no, we no, we pick it. What careers you want? What would you want to be Charles Barkley career or Robert Ory's? We need to get this right because they probably gonna talk about this on TNT soon as Barkley get back. I go with Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with y'all. He said, "Man, the playoffs coming up, man. I don't need them talking shit, man. I'm going with Charles, man. Damn, I really want to go with Robin because I, I can lace all five of these and two more. And Chuck, all the rings Chuck got, he had to buy personally. But, but I'm gonna go with Chuck, man. Cause <laughs> hey, listen, man. Put on some real shit, man. You 23 years old." Since you came into the league, you know, your career has just been elevating. Other than the one year you was with Kyrie because he slowed your asses down with all that dribbling. You know, you know, I understand. I'm a basketball player, so I understand how Kyrie came in and fucked y'all rhythm up. You feel what I'm saying? Taking 47 dribbles every possession, you know. Because ain't no way y'all was better without Kyrie, and then y'all get Kyrie, and then now y'all worse. So... Kyrie had to come in. The Kyrie Kyrie came in there on some N1 shit. He yeah, thought he, he was hot sauce. Yeah, no, he, he fucked their rhythm up. But other than that, you, know, you ain't have any setbacks. You just constantly grew. You're constantly growing. You're growing. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to commend you for doing your thing because it's obvious you're putting the work in in the off season because you every year you're growing, you're growing, you're growing. And you're the youngest player that has 60 points, right, in the history of the league, right, if I'm not correct, if I'm I, not in the history of Boston. Boston. Damn. So you you outdid Bird, huh? You know, Bird was a hell of a nigga, man. <laughs> Bird came and shot. Bird said he going to play one game left-handed and gave okay. niggas like 30. Like, think about that. Think if you said, I'm fuck it. tonight I'm going out, I'm shooting everything left-handed. You probably wouldn't have eight, man. You think you, you, think you could get, dog, you think you get 20 left-handed? You said eight, now you're saying 20. You think <laughs> he said I can get an eight ball? I can get eight, bro. You even got to shoot your foul shots left handed. Who? You think? All right. You think? What's the most you think you can get in the game left handed? Everything left handed. Everything left handed. Come on. It don't even look the same. It don't even he how his setup don't even look. How you gonna do a step back with a, with your lefty? That shit gonna look so nasty. I had to switch up my game. I just had to figure it out. So you doing all drives and I could get twelve. You can get twelve. Twelve to fifteen. All left handed. Who we playing? The Sixers. When you shoot thirty three percent with your right hand against Ben, I'm just saying. So the left hand <laughs> shit. <laughs> you shoot three <laughs> percent. Yo, I hope we play them. Yeah. I hope y'all play them too. Make sure you're at the game. You know I'm gonna be right there because we got we got a big three. 
that I feel is, is stronger than y'all big three right now. Mm-hmm. You, Kemba, and uh, and Jason. I mean, uh, uh, um, Jalen, uh, Ben, Tobias, who y'all don't really think is that good. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Th, I'm, I'm just gonna throw that out there. We we was talking off camera. And they was talking about the scouting report on you. I hope you looking at this shit. Matter of fact, I'm going to send this shit to you. <laughs> they was talking about the scouting report. Coach Pooh talking about the scouting report on THs. Just put his ass in action. I'm like, wait, hold on. Wait, what you mean? <laughs> just, like, just put him in action and he, went, he done? Like, oh, he can't make nothing happen? Uh, newsflash, TH. They going to put you in action? I need you to step the fuck up. Let me tell you, when you already know what the game plan is, I got the cheat code. I'm talking about the shit that be right there on the board. Soon as you walk in, double Joel, (laughs) put Tobias in action. I need you to step the fuck up. That's all I'm saying. They don't think much of you. But that's another note. So I hope we do see y'all in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Because I love coming to Philly. Oh, what you just think? You just cooking up in would Philly? You, would you like the cheesesteaks? We'll go to Escobibble. Escobibble. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He really like coming to Philly. Yeah, he he like. naming the good shit. I <laughs> thought he was going to say, we go to Geno's. I was about to say, nigga, that's some tourist shit. No, my man, <laughs> my, 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 man uh, my man, Karan, take me to Escobibble on South Street. Mm-hmm. He know what's he? Okay, you really real live Philly guy. Okay. Yeah. What'd he get you? The chicken cheese steak? And the gremlin. And the gremlin. Mm. Talk, sure. Kevin. Talk. What's the small fry? Small fry. With the, that nigga six seven, I did. You say you get a small fry. Man, nigga six seven, man, you get that nigga a small fry. You must be paying this shit. I'm gonna go pick this shit. Up. Give, him a, give him a small fry, cheap ass nigga. Give him a small fry, nigga six seven, a small fry. A small fry. Oh man, damn, Ron, don't do him like that, man. Yeah, man. You know what? Do him like that. Make sure he's hungry. Yeah, when he play. You know what I mean, when he. Play. Make sure you know, get him the small fry and the smallest steak on the market, too. Make sure that nigga starving come game time. You hear me? We need all the benefits we can get you from Philly. Don't ever forget that. And we came to the uh, the Danny Rump last year, two years ago. You you played? You put some work in? I, had Y'all put a, I, had I used to put 40. a little work up in there, too. Oh, look at I had 40. Look at he just, yeah, I, I had a 40. They, yeah. they love me in Philly. Yeah, we do. We, because yes, we honestly, do. let's just be for real. We fucked up. Who the fuck was doing the the, the pick in that year? They picked Markel Fultz. I'm just saying. I'm that's, my, that's my man, too. Yeah, I, mean, I knew you got a shot at Mountain and all that shit. That's my man, too. But imagine if we had you and Big Motherfucker. I'm just saying. We draft a nigga number one, he going in two years. I don't think that shit ever happened. Even Kwame Brown lasted longer than that. God damn. I'm just saying, man. I'm just, I, I got to keep it real. Markel Fultz, no, he doing his thing now. He, you know, he, he's, he grew into, you know, who he's going to become. But those first two years, man, and I'm going to blame the Sixers organization for that. Me personally. Because how do you draft a motherfucker number one and then tell that motherfucker he got to learn how to shoot different? Y'all fuck that man game up, man. Had that man at the foul line talking about hitching and shit. I'm like, he never shot like that in college. Why did they mess this man's game up, man? So, man, the six organization going to gonna get the – I can't believe y'all did that shit, man. This man sitting right here is supposed to be – I'm supposed to be talking to him in a, from a sixer standpoint. So, yeah, we about to win that thing this year, right? Yeah, you know, me and big motherfucker and Ben, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Now he he's sitting around here talking about Kemba and Jalen and shit and, and a nigga named Taco, man. <laughs> <laughs> said, Taco, that was a good mood the other night, though. I'm just saying. You seen him? Yeah, I seen him. But listen, man, we appreciate you for tapping yes. in with us, man. You know what I'm saying? And I wish you the best of luck. We coming back to get Kemba. You know, we we doing this from Kemba House, though. <laughs> <laughs> Another story there. Another story. <laughs> 
we we going over to Kemba House. We going to do the million dollars worth of game, and we going to get it popping, man. Shout out to the Boston Celtics, man. Shout out to Coach Pooh. Shout out to Kemba. Shout out to Jalen. Shout out to everybody. No, my my they traded my ball from Philly. That was there last year. Number Brad. eight. Yeah, they traded Brad. They got rid of Brad. He ain't worth number eight. Yes, he did, didn't he? Number nine. Number nine. Oh, number nine. Yeah, they yeah, got rid of Brad. Yeah, we Philly dude on our team last year. Who? Yeah, because y'all like Philly niggas. I know what it is. Who y'all have from Philly on the team last year? Brad Wanamaker. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, y'all got rid of him. He he, he with uh, Indiana now. But shout out to everybody. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> they was like, yeah, we had him last year. Then. Yeah, we sent him to Indiana get him out of it. <laughs> but shout out to everybody, man, from Boston that's doing anything. Man, I wish y'all nothing but the best of luck. Unless y'all playing the Sixers. Then I wish y'all to get the shit beat out of y'all. And it's just like that. Right!